to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be discussing about the last and foremost trick identities, which is the Pythagorean identity. So, what is the Pythagorean identity? Well, to come up with the equation of it, let's just start ourselves with a unit circle. This is going to be the x value, and this is going to be the y value. And also, if you want to know more about the unit circle, don't forget to check my previous video, because in there, I'll be discussing everything about the unit circle. Its functions, its basics, everything. So, let's say that I start with an angle of theta. So then, these are the two lines that will make the angle of it. This will go to infinity, and the angle is going to be theta. And, just for a fresh reminder, if we take the point intersection of the line of the angle and the unit circle, we're going to get this point. And if we measure the y value of it, that is basically the sine of the angle. And then for the x value, that in turn is going to be the cosine of the value. And then with this information, let's construct ourselves a right triangle with our angle as a base. So then we're going to add an altitude from the point intersection until the x value and then we're going to get this triangle and then for this triangle we know two of its sides this side as i've mentioned before is going to be the sine of the theta while this side is basically the x value the cosine of it so how do we find out this side well at first you already know it's one because it's going to be the radius of the circle but how do we algebraically express it? Well, we know of the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is basically saying that the base squared plus by the height squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared. And then we input our values, cosine of theta as the base. So cosine squared of theta plus by b squared, that's basically the height, so sine of theta we square it, it's going to be the radius of the circle, or the hypotenuse, 1 squared. And then, for the cosine and the sine, no matter which point you pick from the Cartesian plane, the square of it will always be positive. If you get cosine is equal to negative, or sine is negative, it will eventually square and will become positive. So then, we can simplify this into basically saying cosine squared plus by sine squared equals and there you go. That is going to be our Pythagorean identities. So this is one of the things that I love most from this Pythagorean identities, which is that it's very simple but very useful. It's easy to be memorized and the derivation of the equation is fairly simple. And then there are two other equations that we can derive from this. But first, Let's just remind ourselves about the reciprocal identities. Which are those, you may ask? Well, sine is going to be 1 over cosecant. Cosine is going to be 1 over secant. And then we know that tangent is going to be sine over cosine. So, the cotangent is basically the reciprocal of the tangent which is why they're called the reciprocal identities, 1 over tangent. But since tangent is sine over cosine, we can just find out the reciprocal of it, which is going to be cosine divided by sine. To memorize these identities is fairly simple. We just have to find out the identities that correlate with our trig identities. Sine with cosecant, cosine with secant, tangent with cotangent. And then we just have to find the reciprocal of them. And then, for this, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, let's just rewrite it in here. Cosine squared plus by sine squared equals 1. Let's just divide both sides by, let's start with cosine squared. What will happen? Well, this fraction can be simplified into cosine squared over cosine squared plus by sine squared over cosine squared. And then... What is 1 over cosine squared? Well, 1 over cosine, because cosine is the reciprocal of secant, 
So 1 over cosine is going to be secant. This is going to be secant. And don't forget the square. And then, what is cosine squared over cosine squared? Well, there's going to be basically 1. And then sine squared over cosine squared. We know that sine over cosine is tangent. So you put in tangent, but then we square it. So it is equal to secant squared. So this is the other equation from our Pythagorean identities. But the last one, rather than dividing by cosine squared, what if we divide by sine squared? Well, for that one, let's write ourselves. Cosine squared plus by sine squared equals 1. We divide both sides by sine squared. We can simplify this fraction into just being cosine squared over sine squared plus by sine squared over sine squared. We know that sine squared over squared is going to be 1, basically. And then, what is 1 over sine squared? Well, 1 over sine is basically the reciprocal of sine. The reciprocal of sine, as you can see, is going to be cosecant. So 1 over sine is going to be cosecant, but don't forget the square. And then, what about cosine squared over sine squared? Well, we know that cosine over sine is going to be the reciprocal of tangent, which is going to be cotangent. So that it is going to be basically cotangent, but don't forget to square it. Maybe plus by 1 is going to be cosecant squared. And there you go. It's going to be the last equation for our Pythagorean identities. And then, you may ask, what is the importance of these Pythagorean identities? The other identities have their importance coming out very fairly simple. The sum and difference identities is for finding sum and difference of trig ratios. Double angle is for doubles. Half angles is for halves. But what about Pythagorean identities? Well, let's just erase some parts right over here. For example, what if you're given that sine of x is equal to 0 0.8 and then you're asked what will the cosine of x be? Well, we're going to need an equation that comprises sines and cosines, but no other trig ratios, only sines and cosines, no tangents, no sine of a plus b, no cosine of a plus b, just sine and cosine. Well, it's right here. Pythagorean identities is only sine and cosine. The square can be get rid easily. So then, we can use this equation, sine squared plus by cosine squared equals 1. Sine is 0 0.8, so we input 0 0.8 for sine, but we square it. 0 0.8 squared is 0 0.64. We plus by cosine squared is going to be 1. So then, cosine squared is going to be 1 minus by 0 0.64, which is going to be 0 0.36. So the but cosine of it, well, we square it. 0 0.36, we square it, that's going to be 0 0.6. And there you have it. Even not by knowing our x value, we can figure out the cosine. And the same thing with our tangent. We can use the other two equations if we want to find out the tangents. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit like button. And don't forget, in my next video, I'll be discussing about practice questions for everything about trigonometry. Thank you for watching!